It is the touchline here on Y254. Robert Rosoro is my name. Beautiful afternoon. We have been talking about rugby Kenya, the World Cup qualifiers. But now is when we get to know what really happened in that match and some of the other matches that also were played on the African continent and world over in these uh, 2022 World Cup qualifiers as Kenya lost to Mali away by five goals to nil. The last time Kenya lost by that margin, we have to go back, I think, to the 80s, 82 there. And I think early 2009, I think we lost to Egypt also by five goals to nil. Joining us here on set to talk about everything fan zone is uh, Tyra Swayaki was here with me for the sports pages and also Eric Aganya also coming here for football. Eric, how was your week, man? Rick has been um, good <laughs> apart from uh, the humiliation that we got as a national team. <laughs> yes. It really spoiled the mood of the, mo the, the week completely, <laughs> completely. Tyra has described it as a soap opera. How can you describe that much? <laughs> uh, it was just a humiliation, a serious humiliation. Yeah. Uh, to our national team, bearing in mind that uh, in the first 30, 40 minutes you've considered four goals, yes. uh, you have no room of coming back to that game. Yeah. Uh, tactically, we were outplayed. Yes. Uh, the fielding of the players, a problem. And uh, that goes back to the federation, because you look at, uh, you brought in a coach three weeks to the qualifier, and here we have a double header. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are coming back on Sunday. Uh, the same same to team to play as here, yeah. and uh, you see those two games were very crucial. And when you have those changes three weeks to the to those games, uh, you are likely to to suffer, and um, we suffered as a, as, a, as a national team. We suffered. I, I, I had a conversation here. I think uh, you, you were listening to it uh, when we were talking about rugby, yes. and uh, the same same thing I've actually realized also happens to be in football, because we've been talking to many experts, and they usually say our players take time to develop yes. before they get to the basics and development is key for us when we look at that match uh, those players are okay i might be wrong and i can stand to be corrected i i can take it those players are a bit inexperienced to play in the african continent going against a team like mali we, we lacked experience, I, I have to agree with you, yeah. uh, because if you look at the players uh, that were brought in, quite a number of them, uh, that is a very big stage for them. Yes. So you need to have a mix or a blend of uh, youth and experience. Yeah. And that is why uh, we question some decisions, for example, the likes of uh, Victor Wanyama retiring mm -hmm. from the national team. He may not do much on the field, yeah. but uh, the 30 minutes that he'll be on the field, he'll be able to motivate these players. Mm -hmm. He's been there at that stage. Mm -hmm. He's played at a bigger stage at, 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 at Tottenham, uh, at Southampton. So he will be able to manage some of these situations. Yeah. Our players have not. Most most of them were playing locally, yeah. and uh, to make matters worse, those even those who are feeling like the likes of Joa Shonyango, Joa Shonyango naturally is a centre back. Mm -hmm. So when you play him at right back, you've confused him more. And then you are playing at against against a Mali team that has had their coach for the last two three years. A Mali team that they under uh, 21, uh, they, they, they under 21, mm -hmm. they they reached I think the final, mm -hmm. and uh, a Mali team that has been developing throughout. Yeah. A Mali team that has experience and uh, they are composed at that particular mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So we need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. We need to go back to the drawing board, take time one year, mm -hmm. build a team yeah. that can compete internationally. Tell us, world over, look at Cristiano Ronaldo, 36. Edison Cavani, still playing. You, you remember the Italian goalkeeper, Gigi Buffon. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <laughs> Back here at home, you look at the Egyptian uh, captain, El Hadri. Yes. Remember the goal? I think he played up to his 40s. Uh -huh. We <coughs> lacked players like Jesse Were, Victor Mugubi Wanyama, yes. Teddy Akumu yes. in that team. That has to be our main undoing. I think this problem is deeper than what the eyes saw on the field. Yeah. It goes back up to the federation. Nick Mwendwa has not been running Kenyan football as it ought to have been run, especially in this his second term. And and we discussed this in a, on the opening segment, yeah. the spot, uh, to, put, to put it mildly, the spot between Nick and mm -hmm. Gormahia and AFC Leopards 
can also be attributed to the shutting out of AFC Leopards and Gormaya players who might have had a bit more experience mm -hmm. than the lads we fielded from being fielded yes. uh, last Thursday night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now that is petty. Mm -hmm. That is putting egos and sideshows above the national interests. Mm -hmm. That is taking things a bit too far. Yeah. Eric has also mentioned the issue of having in a coach randomly a few in the in the middle of world cup qualifiers and a few days before a very important game against a mali side that even though they were slow off the blocks in these particular qualifiers they beat rwanda by a paltry one nil and then drew with uganda they were looking for that confidence and then they would pick harambe stars gave them that confidence of, on a silver platter yeah now really you can't squarely blame the young guys who, who are fielded. Yes. This thing runs deeper to the way we've managed football under Nick Mwendwa in his second term. And a, a coach who was depending on other people to tell him, field this one, field this one, because he doesn't yeah. quite know the players. Yeah. And a technical bench whose loyalty to this particular team now also looks in doubt and jeopardy. Actually, there's a friend of mine uh, on Facebook who is actually a very big uh, football journalist and he has been doing a countdown for this coach and he actually his contract now is uh, 46 days to go as we look at it. And also, Eric, that changing of the coach yes. at the middle of campaigns, uh, the, the World Cup preparing for the World Cup qualifiers, we had uh, Francis Kimanzi uh, as the coach. Then midway through, coach Francis is out. We Ghost bring Mule back comes. Jacob Gostumle. Gostumle, I think, managed it in nine, nine matches. I think he won three, drew four there, and lost, I think, one match. Midway through, is off the field of play. We've brought in coach Firat, the Turkish now coming in. First match loses 5-0. Now, those are the decisions he's talking about that are away from the field of play that are impacting the performance of these players. I think uh, there's, uh, I have to agree with, uh, uh, with him that uh, there's some arrogance uh, uh -huh. that is uh, with, uh, with, the, with the Federation president yes. in his second term because uh, he's doing things the same way, expecting different results because uh, uh, you saw what he did uh, during Kimansi's time. Yeah. Kimansi was trying to build a team. Mm -hmm. uh, you bring in a uh, ghost midway, midway through a campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, didn't, it didn't bring the results. Yes. Now you repeat the same, same mistake. Uh, then you're not learning from that. And uh, this one was even worse because you, you remember when uh, Kimanzi left, he left together with his technical bench, the whole of it. Yes. Uh, when Ghost left, he left with so. his assistant. Mm -hmm. Muluya remained. Mm -hmm. The other assistant remained. Yes. So you brought in a new coach, new tactics, mm -hmm. but Muluya is there and a few others of the old block. Yes. Uh, so there's a confusion of, of, of a clash of tactics here. And then uh, the coach is, an, is, is not... If he had brought in... A Kenyan coach, maybe who has been trained, uh, coaching in the Premier League, understands Kenyan football, understands African football, yes. understands the players who are playing. But this is a guy who has come from Europe. Uh, I saw his record. Uh, I had posted it on Facebook sometime. He, he's played 11 mm -hmm. uh, and won none. Yes. Uh, drawn most of them and lost mm -hmm. uh, in his previous engagement. So what were you expecting? We're expecting confusion, and the confusion is what we saw on the field. Yeah. Because you saw uh, 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 players uh, uh, from, uh, look at <coughs> a goalkeeper like Saruni, who was left out altogether, the Ulinzi keeper who has had a good, a good season. Uh, look at uh, Major, uh, who has been a, a, a centre forward, was played on the right wing. You see such kind of things, eh? mm -hmm. it demotivates the players. Yeah. Here, we cannot blame the players for these results. The back and the blame should lie on the coach and the federation. Yeah. And uh, Nick should take responsibility and apologize to Kenyans because uh, as Kenyans, uh, we are the football lovers, we are the ones who are suffering. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what to expect on Sunday because uh, this is a game that is going to be played without even fans. And that so issue... We, uh, there's no home advantage. Yeah. That issue yes. that he's also pointed out, that we pointed out earlier, yeah. of playing players in positions that are not naturally theirs. Yes, yeah. That's finishing the team completely. Exactly. And yeah. you finish the confidence of the team because yeah. uh, you look at uh, somebody like Joshua Shonyengo, he was played off, posi off position. After we consider the fourth goal, he was withdrawn altogether. What is going through that player's mind? Yeah. 
you've killed the morale completely. Mm -hmm. How do you expect him to perform in the next game? Yeah. Big, big one for Kenya there, considering that now Mali is leading that group by seven points. Mm -hmm. Uganda, five points. Coach Michu for Uganda has actually come back to Uganda. His second time now managing Uganda. And they missed out on the AFCON. The last edition of the AFCON, actually, they played very well, making it on to the last four of that tournament. And it's a team that is on the rise yes. with the experienced players. They might get that spot for the World Cup for the first time. They have a chance. Yeah. The window is quite open for them. And one thing that could bolster their hopes is the fact that this Mali side, yes, they've been building up. Yes, they have a fantastic coach who yeah. seems to have his head above the water. Yeah. But they are not really exceptional. Mm -hmm. They are not wow. Mm -hmm. Like, the same can be said of Nigeria. The same can be said of one or two other teams. Yes. So Uganda have a chance. Yeah. And... Actually, what made Mali look so exceptional yeah. is the fact that Harambe Stars did not quite turn up for that game. Yes. In the first few m opening minutes when Harambe Stars looked confident, yeah. Mali looked very average. In fact, Michael Olunga almost scored a second-minute goal. He was just off target. Now, with Uganda looking like they are, mm -hmm. they have a chance mm -hmm. against Mali, they have a chance against Rwanda, and they're playing Harambe Stars at home in Kampala, yeah. they'll have a beautiful chance, especially against us. Big one there for Uganda, as they might get a chance to represent East Africa when it comes to the World Cup. But the problems of Kenyan football can take the whole day to be talked about, and <laughs> we'll expect to talk about it some other time. But let's go ahead to talk about everything that is happening on the fan zone today. We've got the UEFA. Nations League final coming your way, I think, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, the second edition, and it will be in the Sun Zero where France will be playing against Spain. Big match that will be coming there. Big match, big match, because if you look at uh, uh, these two teams, uh, uh, France versus Spain, yeah. what they have overcome to, 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 to reach the final yeah. is a milestone. France beat Belgium, Spain beat Italy. Yes. Uh, Italy are the, the, the European champions. Mm -hmm. And I looked at uh, the Spanish team. They're building some, something special. Mm -hmm. There's a 17-year-old boy in the midfield mm -hmm. uh, who really ran the show. And uh, uh, that tells you about structures in mm -hmm. football. Yeah. Remember, Spain had a structure and had a, a golden generation that elapsed, the likes of Xavi, the likes of Iniesta. Now they're bringing in another one. Mm -hmm. uh, how I wish we adopt such, such kind of things. Look at uh, uh, France. France, mm -hmm. they were able to beat uh, uh, Belgium. Uh, Belgium were leading 2-0. France yeah. came from down and they beat them 3-2. Mm -hmm. Without even the likes of Ngolo Kante playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've uh, had Ngolo Kante uh, really pulling the strings. Yes. So on tomorrow we're looking at a very exciting game. Mm -hmm. Uh, between these two uh, giants and maybe maybe uh, I'll put my money on France based on experience yeah they have a more experienced coach more experienced squad mm -hmm. and um, more desire mm -hmm. and hunger to win now that they didn't perform well at the Euros because yes. it was expected they'll do very well at the Euros they have a good squad and um, I'm happy uh, if you look at the French squad the Benzema coming in and really fitting in and uh, doing wonders for the national team. And that is why we talk about experience. You experience. see now experience coming yeah. in. W one team that uh, actually failed to turn up now, let's say it can be Belgium, because now this is the generation that when you look at Belgium, you see this is a team that can go ahead and win a trophy. But when it matters the most, they do not turn up. Belgium's story is one of mixed emotions, very inspirational, mm -hmm. but then falls short of getting to the finish line yes. in pole position. They gave us a beautiful World Cup in 2014, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And then at the just concluded Euros uh, last summer, yeah. they did exceedingly well yeah. and almost beat Italy, but again fell short of finishing at, at the pole position when it it mattered most yes now that's a story of mixed fortunes that golden generation can only do so much time now is against them yeah the lukaku's that beautiful generation that yeah. era i think it's it's pretty much over for them yeah but they just have one last throw of the dice 
which is next year's World Cup, if they qualify, they <laughs> might just, they might just, they, no, no, no. <laughs> they might just, they might just, I'm, I'm not saying they win it, I'm yeah. not saying they win it, yes. but they might just count on the experience that yeah. Eric is talking of. Eric, that, that's that's pretty much it for do you them. buy that no i don't buy that because <laughs> I, I i i quit belgium to holland they're the biggest pretenders in world football yes. because you'll find the netherlands and they excite the fans and then when it matters most mm -hmm. they fail they, they fall short yeah uh, belgium has really uh, disappointed many fans yes because uh, they have everything in that squad mm -hmm. they have uh, the likes of kevin de bruyne look at what de bruyne is doing at man city yes look at uh, what lukaku is doing at chelsea look at uh, arnold Mm -hmm. You see, these are players, uh, uh, look at uh, uh, the players who are at their peak. Yes. And they have a youthful manager in Roberto Martinez. So I wonder, why is it that they cannot uh, bring in uh, uh, that finish? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. why is it that they're not learning from their previous mistakes? The same applies to Holland. Yeah. Holland does the same. Mm -hmm. it, it really does well in the qualifiers. And then when it matters most mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the main cup, yeah. they do nothing. Oh. So uh, I think uh, their time is up. Because we have other countries that are coming up, like uh, Portugal, mm -hmm. that is also producing very good talent. We have Italy, yes. Roberto yes. Mancini has built a team from nothing. Yeah. And we have Spanish, the Spanish team that is rebuilding. Uh, so they're in trouble. Uh, for, just to just put in for the UEFA Nations League, he yeah. reckons France will win. I think Spain will pick them to it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I'm to put in my input for that, I think Spain... They started the Euros slowly, yeah. and then they started building, building the confidence. They grew in stature. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, when against Italy, they lost in the semi-finals, mm -hmm. but it was due to tactics. They gave too much to the Italians. The Italians yes. sat back and then hit them uh, on the counter. It went down to penalties. They lost on that. I think they've learned from their mistakes, and they've looked very impressive in the UEFA Nations League. I'm going with Spain tomorrow. Spain? You're going with Spain or France? Uh, France. France. Big story that uh, we have been following also, but we'll talk about it later. But let's quickly pass through the Balloon d'Oro 2021 nominees. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo there, Lionel Messi is there. Harry Kane actually made on to that list. And uh, we've got, I think, five players from Chelsea also making on to that list. We've got Edward Mendy coming on to the list. N'Golo Kante, Jorginho, Romelu Lukaku and Caesar as Pilqueta, not forgetting the young man, Manson Mount, also coming on to that side. Where will that trophy go to? Uh, there's a lot of hula baloo about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. <laughs> and uh, in my humble opinion, uh, last season they didn't do much. Yes. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, if you look at, at club level, Juventus didn't win mm -hmm. uh, anything. Uh, he scored very many goals. I like him at his age. He's, he's really done well. Lionel Messi came to regain his form the last minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. But look at N'Golo Kante, mm -hmm. what he did for Chelsea. He's the one who assisted Chelsea to win the, 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 mm -hmm. the, 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 the UEFA Champions League. Yes. And uh, without him, they could not have won. Mm -hmm. uh, the likes of uh, Jorginho. Yes. Also won the Champions League and mm -hmm. won the World Cup with the, uh, the, the Euros mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with Italy. Mm -hmm. So my money would have been more focused on the likes of N'Golo Kante. Yeah. Because he's a player who is very instrumental. And for the last 12-13 uh, years, between, I think uh, Messi and Ronaldo, there's been a tug of war between Messi and Ronaldo. And when you look at it, it's because it has been... It, it was made to be a goal-scoring trophy. Yes. Not, not uh, the impact you have on the team. Yes. Uh, I usually go back to my best year, I think I was to be there, I think 2005-2006 there when uh, Fabio Cannavaro, Cannavaro the uh, Italian, yeah, the Italian defender, defender yeah, won yeah. it, yes. winning the World Cup and also winning the Champions League with uh, Real Madrid and they gave it to a defender because of merit and what he had done to the team. So if, I, if it's my vote today, I'll go for N'Golo Kante because not forgetting the final, what he did in the semi-final, what he did for the team into the running on them going on to win that trophy. He will go with my vote. Who will you go for? I'd go for Jorginho. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There's that criteria of determining who is the ballon d'or. Is yes. it goals? Is it defensive? Is it a guy who stands between the posts and takes a team all the way to a final, perhaps even wins them a trophy? It's very controversial and 
it sort of kills the debate, but at the same time, it excites the debate around the Ballon d'Or. Yes. The reason why I'd go for Jorginho is pretty simple. <clears throat> His performance has been underrated, but he put in such effort mm -hmm. for Chelsea to win the UEFA Champions League, Chelsea to win the UEFA Super Cup, mm -hmm. and for Italy to win the Euros. But I'm not saying he deserves it because of the titles that he won. You yes. look at his individual input. Mm -hmm. In the Euros, that final, he got injured against mm -hmm. England very early on in the game. Yes. Ordinarily, most players would just do this and they're out. Yeah. They're substituted and someone. He really did get injured. Mm -hmm. But he played on. Yeah. He was asked, should we substitute? He did this. He went for glory. He chased for it. It even got to a point whereby he wasn't able to successfully score his penalty in the shootout. Mm -hmm. But remember when he was fully fit against Spain, he scored his, uh, his, his penalty kick exceptionally well. Yeah. So for me, what more does a player need to do to inspire the beauty that football is? Yeah. It's got to be Jorginho for me, and I'll give it to him all day long. Big one there, Jorginho Ngolo Kante. Yeah, those are for hours for the Ballon d'Or. We'll be waiting to see who will be going to win that one. It is the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. I'm joined by Tyra Swayaki and Eric Aganya as we discuss everything that is happening in the world of football. Big story also that comes out is we've got a new <laughs> owner in town. And that is going to be Newcastle having made a deal there. And now they are one of the richest backed clubs at the moment with the, the Saudi coming, the Saudi Arabian <coughs> people coming on to buy the club at 300 million. For us, we don't care about how much money these guys are bringing in on to and everything. We care about what's next for Newcastle now. <laughs> they are what next, you know, the Arsenal fans will not like this. A friend of mine was telling me now Arsenal has gone, has gone a step down because yes. Newcastle will definitely come up uh, because they've been bought. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, uh, something really exciting taking place. You see these clubs, uh, they're being bought uh, uh, by uh, the Arabs and uh, they're pumping in a lot of money. Yes. Uh, what will uh, make them make an impact uh, and uh, uh, will uh, be there'll be first casualties. Mm -hmm. The casualties, the first casualty will be the coach. Mm -hmm. Steve Bruce will go. Yes. Uh, because with that kind of money, mm -hmm. uh, they bring. They need a coach who can attract the big players. Yes. A coach who can manage the big egos. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at people, uh, clubs like PSG has very big egos. We have Neymar. We have the likes of uh, Messi, mm -hmm. Mbappe in one in one dressing room. You look at Man City. So they'll need a, an established coach. Yes. And uh, such kind of a coach who can uh, uh, manage that transition. Mm -hmm. There are not many. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the likes of uh, Man, uh, Nani Roberto Man, Nani, um, uh, Jose, Mourinho. Jose Mourinho did it with Chelsea in 2004. Yes. He managed that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Conte mm -hmm. because uh, he's the big name coach who, who is not attached to any club. Yes. Uh, maybe he may be the one who may come in. Yeah. and uh, be able to attract the big players and calm the egos. Because here are players will come in, they'll mm -hmm. be paid very huge salaries. Uh, pride comes in, so you need a coach mm -hmm. who will tell them, look here, look at my medals. Mm -hmm. I've won this and this and this, so your salary yeah. will not tell me anything. Actually, I was looking at, uh, uh, look at the sites uh, that uh, the bookmaker sites and yes. the coaches that are leading on for that. And you have actually mentioned Jose Mourinho, who is on that list. Antonio Conte is also on that list. And uh, those are the most likely coaches that Newcastle will go for. But let's also look at the players, kind of players Newcastle can at all. Because they, they, they were talking about being injected i think upwards of 200 million yes. and they can allow to buy any player they want on the planet they are facing relegation even though it is seven matches that we have played so far in the league what kind of players can newcastle attract even in the january transfer window well first and foremost when such a takeover happens mm -hmm. it's important that the new ownership one understands football yes and number two loves football mm -hmm. then they know that here we need a manager who will give room to do as he pleases will give him the budget to buy as he pleases but demand results of him so yes. what sort of manager are we looking for 
we're looking for either Antonio Conte, as he has put it. We're looking for either Jose Mourinho, who's committed at Roma rather recently, so might not be a, a, that readily available a prospect. Yes. And we're looking at Zinedine Zidane. Uh -huh. Now, that okay. is someone who can walk into any dressing room, yeah. and he doesn't have to say a word. There'll be silence, and everyone will look up to him. He's proven it on the pitch, up to World Cup level, not to mention the Euros. He's also proven it as a manager. He's won a hat trick of UEFA Champions Leagues, back to back. Who does that, other than Zizou? Mm -hmm. So, once those that formula is followed, mm -hmm. then now we can talk of the players. Mm -hmm. Which player can't you buy with that kind of money? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a Ballon d'Or list of 30 players we saw from yesterday, shortlisted. You can just pick up a piece of paper and decide, we want this one, this one, this one, this one. Mm -hmm. That January window opens like this, and you see them flocking one after the other. Yeah. They have the kind of money I have never, ever seen in football. We're talking huge, huge sums of money. But that money has to be used well. Because we saw AC Milan being bought after uh, 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 big sums of money came into place, and they, they just dipped in performance. Why? Because the new ownership did not seem to quite understand football. It's taken them long for their money to impact positively. Now is when we're seeing AC Milan come back up. The same happened at Inter Milan. Now is when we're seeing Inter Milan come back up. And last season they won the Italian Serie A. So once the, those dynamics are addressed well, an ownership that loves and understands football, yeah. a manager who can do the business, and then the players follow. We're talking of Newcastle United in next season, in the same length and breadth that we will be talking of Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, and Manchester City. All in all, it takes time for a club to come into that uh, level. I think you uh, saw the journey Man City took yes. to get on to that level. But uh, let, let, let's uh, look at that. There, it's on our screen there where they have said that we don't demand a team that wins. We demand a club that tries. Do you think Newcastle and the takeover now represents that? It represents that because one thing about Newcastle, even before the takeover, they have the most loyal fans Yes, in, in, in English football. Yeah. And no team has a, a, a fans who are so loyal and committed like Leeds and Newcastle. Yes, And they have a big following. And this news excites the fans. Mm. And as he says, no player uh, is an uh, unbuyable nowadays. Yeah. You look at the patriotism, the love for club ended with the likes of Giggs and the likes of Scholes who could say no money will pull me out of Manchester Gerard, United. Yes. The likes of Gerard, uh, John it Terry. Ended, John yes. Terry, it ended yeah. completely. Mm -hmm. Today's players are mercenaries. Mm -hmm. uh, where the money is, is where they will go. Yes. And you find that uh, these people are going to dangle a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to these young players, especially the 21 year olds and the 25 year olds. Yes. They're going to dangle a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And um, they will not make a, 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 a huge impact, as Tyra says, to the top four directly. Yes. But they will compete. They mm -hmm. will give these other clubs a run for their money. Yeah. Even towards the end of this season, after the January transfer window, they're not going to go down. Yeah. And next season, they'll come back stronger. And uh, the seasons that follow, because these guys will continue pumping in money. 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 And uh, the seasons that follow, yeah. subsequent seasons, uh, they'll now come back to the top four. Yeah. And it will be scary. It will be scary because Newcastle fans are loud, yeah. they are arrogant, and they love football. It will never be a walk in the park going on to St. James's Park yes. to play against Newcastle. Big team there, and we wish them success as now. They will be one of, one of the major money backs that are coming on to the English Premier Let's hope that they will be going on to their good old days of the 80s and the 90s of the magpies that we knew about big one that is coming there but we cannot finish off without talking about manchester united ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a coach also in trouble big support from the boardroom and everybody that is there at uh, manchester united but the fans are not content with the silent assassin as the coach of manchester united oh yes and just before i delve into that let me pass my condolences to back the musin's family 
uh, we worked with him here at Broadcasting House. He was a senior broadcaster to us, but he meant well for everybody. So mm -hmm. my heart, most heartfelt and sincere condolences to the family. And I wish him a safe journey into the next world. Yes. May he rest in eternal perfect peace. Only Gunnar Solskjaer, I've, I've sung it the last two consecutive times I was here. Manchester United has pr what looks arguably like the best squad in world football today. Yes. The team is up here. They need a manager who's up there. We've just discussed about how important it is to have managers who can walk into a dressing room and players turn around, look at them and know, this guy will win me trophies. Let me listen to him. Yeah. Solskjaer is not that manager. Very good player, legend. In terms of managerial prowess, he's done a good job at Manchester United for a first-timer at that level. Yes. And he's done his best. When you look at where he found the team when Mourinho left and where he's brought them, surely he's, he's done pretty well. He finished second last season in a, in a league that has Jürgen Klopp uh, and and so on and so forth. So he's, he's done pretty well, but he's reached his wit's end. That's the end of the road for him. It's time for a bigger manager, whether it's Zidane, whether it's Antonio Conte, who can handle this team, because potentially this team can win you even the Football World Cup. <laughs> but <laughs> if they need the kind of manager who do that for them. Don't sack him. Retain him at United in some role and let him continue learning the ropes from there. He's got potential to manage properly. Eric, he, he the last word for he, us he lacks in that one conversation. Thing. Yeah. Ruthlessness. Yeah. Because as a manager, look at Pep. He's very ruthless. Yeah. Uh, look at uh, Tuchel. Mm. Bring in a player, player doesn't perform, 20 minutes, remove him. Olegana cannot do that. Olegana cannot even sell the dead woods he has. Mm. He's the Mr. Nice guy. Yeah. Mm. He's done well. Even tactically. But we need a coach mm. who can now bring in trophies. Mm. Olegana will not do that. Yeah. His time has run out. He, it is inevitable. Mm -hmm. For Manchester to go to the next level, yeah. they have it's to true. bring in somebody else. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. Who, who is in, in your scorecard? Who do you think can come in and uh, make money? Because I think last season, Manchester was in four semi-finals. Yes. In making, I think, to one final, which they lost, actually. Wh which manager do you think can come to Manchester United and take them to the next level now? Right now, whoever is available, Antonio Conte. Yeah. Antonio Conte, give him that squad, huh. uh, he's going to do miracles. Well, what about Zidane? Even Zidane yeah. can do well with that squad. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Zidane is a tactician. Olegana is not a tactician. Yeah. Olegana is a, is a talent builder. He's building, like, look at Greenwood. Greenwood mm -hmm. is doing very well under Olegana. Yes. But now, game management, that mm -hmm. 90 minutes. Look at the, 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 the Europa final. Mm -hmm. He had a far much better squad than uh, Unai Emery. Yeah. He was beaten by Unai Emery. And the other day, uh, we had to, to rely on a, a last minute uh, Cristiano Ronaldo goal to beat Unai Emery. Yeah. But if you look at the squad on mm -hmm. paper, it's one mm -hmm. of the best squads. Mm -hmm. The game management, mm -hmm. the 90 minutes, yes. is a problem for Legana Solskjaer. Mm -hmm. We have the likes of Tuchel, who gets a red card in the first half against Liverpool mm -hmm. and leaves that field with a point. Mm -hmm. And we have yeah. Olegana, who gets a red card against young boys, leading 1-0, mm -hmm. and he loses that game to one. Are you seeing that? Yes. His timing of substitutions mm -hmm. is still a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So we need a coach who can time his substitutes nicely, yeah. the likes of Zidane mm -hmm. or Antonio Conte. Antonio yeah. Conte, the reason why I am going for Antonio Conte, he's been in England, mm -hmm. he doesn't need to adapt. Yes. He, he knows, he, the, he knows the Premier League, yeah. how it is, because he did it with Chelsea. Yeah. So it will be very easy for him to pick it up from there and do it with Manchester United. Erika Ganya there for us here on the Touchland. That's where we finish off our conversation here. Santa Sana Terras and Eric for coming here on the Touchland. I'm Robert Osoro. Thanks to my director, Fadili and Brian, for making this broadcast a success. From Robert Osoro and the rest of the crew here on the Touchland, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast here on Y254.